Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on Key Stage 5, determining the function given its derivative and a point. Now in the previous video we saw how we could find the original function given the gradient. So if we had, for example, dy over dx was equal to 3x squared, then when we integrated it to find the original function y, do you remember we added 1 to the power and then divided by that power so that just comes 1 x of 3. But we had this plus c, the constant of integration as it's known. And the reason why we have this plus c is because if I was to differentiate this, that would become 3x squared, and that plus c, the constant, would just disappear. So it would indeed become 3x squared. And that could be any constant you like. So we don't actually know what the original function was. We know it looks something like this, where the y-intercept is c, and it has this particular shape because it's a cubic, but we don't know where that c is. It could have equivalently been up here. It could have in fact been here if the c was zero. We don't know what the original function was, but if I was to fix a point on here, so let's just say I knew that this was a point on the curve, then it couldn't have been these other curves. It could have only been this curve which goes through that particular point. So basically the only principle in this video is that if you have a point on the curve, you could then subsequently work out what this plus c is. So let's use that with this first question. A curve has gradient function dy over dx is equal to 4x plus 1. And we're told it passes through 5, 11. So determine y. Now if we know the gradient function, we can find the original function by integrating. So remember, we add 1 to the power, so that becomes x to the 2, and we divide by that new power, so the 4 gets divided by the 2 to get 2. Do you remember that any constant will become that constant x, so that becomes 1x, or just x. And then we've also got this plus c. But we know this is a point on the line, and therefore this point must satisfy that equation. We've seen that principle time and time again, including at GCSE. So let's just substitute those values into the equation. So the y was 11 is equal to 2 times 5 squared, which is 50, plus x, which is 5, plus c. So 11 is 55 plus c, and therefore the c must be minus 44. So that means we now have the full equation of the original line. It's y equals 2x squared plus x, and then plus the c, which is minus 44. And that is the answer. What about this second slightly harder one? So a curve has this gradient function, f prime of x. That's another way of writing dy of dx in a kind of functional form. So let's just copy that out. So let's first integrate it to find the original function. So we add 1 to the power, that becomes x to the 3, and then we divide by that 3, so the 3 eighths becomes 1 eighth. We add 1 to this power, so that becomes x to the positive a half, and then we divide by the half, that's the same as times it by 2, so that becomes minus 20. The plus 1 becomes plus 1x, or just x, and then we've also got this plus c. So there we go, that's the original equation of the line but we know it goes through the point 425. So if we substitute that x and that y into this equation here, well, this is the y over here, so that's the 25, is equal to an eighth of 4 cubed. That 64 divided by 8 is 8, minus 24 to the half, that's the same as root 4, plus x, so plus 4, plus c. Let's just simplify that. That's 25 is equal to 8 minus 40 plus 4 is minus 28 plus C. And that means the C must be 53. So there we go. We've got the original equation. We've got f of x is equal to an 8th x cubed minus 20x to the half plus x and plus the C, which we worked out was 53.